All right, guys, so I am back for the second part of solving um, equations that involve um, non-whole number coefficients. This part, we're going to be looking at uh, solving an equation that involves decimals, okay? Now, inst instead of using um, LCM like we did in the other video, what we're going to do is we're going to use the power of 10, okay, by moving our decimal over. Um, I want you to take a look at a few of the best practices and what you need to be doing in order to solve. Okay, so solving an equation that involves decimals, uh, as I said, instead of using the LCM, we're going to eliminate decimals, those are those coefficients and terms, by using the power of the decimal and the power of 10. So we're going to examine all of the decimals in the equation. Now, how many times does the decimal need to move? The greatest number of moves in all of the decimals that you're dealing with would be applied to all of the terms in the equation. And I'll show you more about what that means in just a sec. Now, the number of places uh, that the decimal needs to move will dictate the power of 10 that each decimal will be multiplied. So, for example, in the decimal 0 0.25 and 0 0.2, um, of those two, the greatest number of moves that needs to be made is 2. So, therefore, I'm going to move both of them, all of the terms, I should say, by two decimal places. Now, once the whole number coefficients have been created, you're going to solve the equation as normal. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over to our work. All right, so... If we take a look, and let me go ahead and make that this adjustment. If we take a look at uh, this first equation, this is uh, negative 0.75p minus 2 is going to be equal to 0.25p. The first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and list all of the decimals that I have here. I have um, negative 0.75. I have... Um, and this is going to be applied to all of the terms. I have the number 2. There is an assumed decimal place there. And then I have 2.5 or 0 0.25. 0 0.25, sorry. Now, it looks to be that in order to make this one a whole number, what I would have to do is actually move this over two places. Um, I need to move this one no places because it's already a whole number. And then move this one again two places. So the greatest number of skips that I need to make is two of all of the terms. Therefore, I'm going to move all of them two places. That becomes one, two, one, two. This has um, um, placeholders of zero. Okay. Now, this one is going to move two as well. So that becomes 25. So I'm going to restate this equation as negative 75p minus... 200 is equal to 25p, okay? So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing myself a line. I want to see what's on this side and what's on that side. I need to create a coefficient that is non-negative. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and move 75p to the other side because when I Add 75 over here, that cancels each other out, becomes like zero pairs for variables. And then I'm going to add 75p over here. This becomes negative 200 is left over here. That's going to be equal to 75 and 25 is going to give me 100. Remember, do not leave your variables behind. Do not abandon them, okay? That is 100p. So in this particular case, I'm going to divide each side by 100. Whatever number is associated with your variable, as you know, I'm going to divide both sides by. So again, I'm going to cancel out these zeros. That becomes negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2, is equal to P. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to do myself a check when dealing with these. It's going to be a little tricky. I want to go ahead and plug this in back into my original equation just in case I have made an error. I'm going to go ahead and substitute the P value here for what I came up with. That's negative 2 minus 2. This minus 2 right here goes along with that one. Okay? That's going to be equal to 0 0.25 times negative 2. Through the magic of uh, YouTube, when I multiply negative 0 0.75 times negative 2, that's going to give me a positive 1.5 because negative and negative together multiplied will be um, positive. Again, negative 2 
um, times 0 0.25 is going to give me negative 0 0.5. When I go ahead and simplify this 1.5, combining these numbers, this is a positive, this is a negative, the highest absolute value becomes the sign of the answer. I'm going to subtract these two, so therefore it will be negative 0 0.5 is equal to negative 0 0.5. Here's my check. Done. Okay. Now, moving on to one that may look a little bit simpler. <coughs> now, you might ask yourself, because I have 3.6W and 1.6W, you may be able to see something that, I, that you can do automatically, but let's go ahead and practice the skill that um, we learned here. So again, I have decimals 3.6 and decimals 1.6 and whole number 24. What is the greatest number that I need to move all of these in order to make a whole number? I don't have to move this one anywhere. I'm going to move this one, 1, to make a whole number. If I move that over, that becomes 16. If I move this over, that becomes 13. So how many decimals am I going to move for each one? I'm going to move each one um, one place. Okay, so again, to restate it, this becomes 36W is equal to 16W, which is a plus or adding. When I move this one over, 1, 1, I'm going to move this one over 1 as well. Okay, so the decimals are here. That decimal becomes there. Okay, we have 240. Okay, 240, 240. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I want to, again, leave the coefficient for the variable in a positive state. So am I going to move 36 over here, or am I going to move 16 over here? If I move 36 over here, I'm going to subtract um, 36, and that's going to be a negative 20W, and I don't want to deal with that, okay? So let's go ahead and subtract negative 16W. Do not abandon your variable, okay, over here. 20w is equal to 240. I'm going to divide both sides. Remember, I'm always dividing by the coefficient that's with the variable. 20 divided by 20 is 1. That just leaves w. 1w, same thing as this, just w. So if I cancel out those zeros like I know I can, 24 divided by 2 becomes what? 12, okay? So w is equal to 12. As always, I want to do my check with my original equation, just in case I've made a mistake somewhere along the way. I'm just going to go ahead and start plugging in. This becomes 3.6 times 12. Should be equal to 1.6 times 12 plus 24. And again, I'm going back to my original equation there. Okay, let me move this over a bit. Okay. So again... The magic of YouTube tells me that 3.6 times 12 is going to become 43.2. When I multiply um, this over, 1.6 uh, times 12 plus 24 is going to give me what? Okay, so I want to reduce these, sorry. Okay, if I go ahead and cancel that out, students have access to calculators now. So we're going to just work that out 12 times 1, that's multiplied by 1.6. Okay, that's going to be 19.2 plus 24. Let's see how that works out. Plus 24, it's going to equal 43.2. So these both equal each other, right? So my check is done. I am done, okay? So that was just a quick tutorial on using, uh, uh, solving, I'm sorry, equations that involve decimals, again, variables on both sides. This is just an extension of the video that I did where variables were on both sides. So if you want to watch that one, go back. The teak that is listed here is 8.8c. Again, in the book, just go to the table of contents and search 8.8c, and it'll take you to all of the examples where that would occur. Okay, now, again, play this video again. If it did not make sense, Ask me a question in class or come to tutorials one of two times a week. And as always, I will see you in class tomorrow.